I'm not happy, complained Gordon. Your firebox is out of order, said James. No wonder, after all that coal we had yesterday. Hard work brings good appetite, snapped Gordon. You wouldn't understand. I know, put in Duck brightly. It's boiler rate. I warned you about that standpipe on the other railway, but you drank gallons. It's not boiler ache, protested Gordon. It's, of course it is, said Henry. That water's bad. It furs up your tubes. Your boiler must be full of sludge. Have a good washout. Then you'll feel a different engine. Don't be vulgar, said Gordon huffily. Gordon backed down on his train, hissing mournfully. Cheer up, Gordon, said the fat controller. I can't, sir. The others say I've got boiler ache, but I haven't, sir. I keep thinking about the dreadful state of the world, sir. Is it true, sir, what the diesels say? What do they say? They boast that they've abolished steam, sir. Yes, Gordon. It is true. What, sir? All my Doncaster brothers drawn the same time as me? All gone. Except one. The guard's whistle blew, and Gordon puffed sadly away. Poor old Gordon, said the fat controller. Hmm, if only we could. Yes, I'll ask his owner at once. He hurried away. One evening, Gordon's driver ran back excited. Wake up, Gordon! The fat controller's given you a surprise. Look! Gordon could hardly believe it. Backing towards him were two massive green tenders, and their engine shape was very like his own. It's flying Scotsman, he gasped. The fat controller's brought him to see me. Oh, thank you, sir. Gordon's toot of joy was drowned by flying Scotsman's as he drew happily alongside. Next day, the two engines were photographed side by side. You've changed a lot, smiled flying Scotsman. I had a rebuild at Crewe. They didn't do a proper Doncaster job, of course, but it serves. I had a rebuild, too, and looked hideous. But my owner said I was an extra special engine and made them give me back my proper shape. Is that why you have two tenders being special? No, you'd hardly believe it, Gordon, but over there, they've hardly any coal and water. But surely, every proper railway. Exactly. You are lucky, Gordon, to have a controller who knows how to run railways. Everyone got on well with Flying Scotsman, except Henry. Henry was jealous. Tenders are marks of distinction, he complained. Everybody knows that. Why has he got two? He's famous, explained Duck and Donald. He was the second to go 100 miles an hour. Besides, the other railway has no coal and water. Oh, sniffed Henry. I can't believe that. I never boast, he continued, but I always work hard enough for two. I deserve another tender for that. Duck whispered something to Donald. Henry, asked Duck innocently. Would you like my tenders? Yours? exclaimed Henry. What have you got to do with tenders? All right, said Duck. The deal's off. Would you like them, Donald? I wouldn't have deprive you of the honour. It is a great honour, said Duck thoughtfully. But I'm only a tank engine, so I don't really understand tenders. Perhaps James might... I'm uh, sorry I was rude, said Henry hastily. How many tenders have you and uh, when could I have them? Six. And you can have them this evening. Six lovely tenders, chortled Henry. What a splendid sight I'll be. That will show the others the sort of engine I am. Henry was excited. Do you think it'll be all right? He asked for the umpteenth time. Of course, said Duck. Just go where I told you and they'll be ready. Meanwhile, word had gone round, and the others waited where they could get a good view. Henry was cheered to the echo when he came, but he wasn't a splendid sight. He had six tenders, true, but they were very old and very dirty. 
all were filled with boiler sludge. Had a good washout, Henry? Called a voice. That's right. You feel a different engine now? Henry wasn't sure, but he thought the voice was Gordon's. 